Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to my card video for the Bottom Heavy Challenge. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Under the Sea Animals stamp set. I'm also using these brushes by Ranger. It's just a set of artist brushes. I'm using the half inch brush. I'm gonna start with my Gonzai Tombi watercolors. I'm gonna pick three different colors of blue and also the gold. I have some Ranger watercolor paper. It's just cut already to A2 size. And I'm gonna take my first color, I'm using, uh, I'm going from light to dark, and I'm gonna create my water by hand. So I'm just gonna create a swirly here. And the nice thing is that I'm just gonna keep going over it and over it so I could get larger, going higher if I want, like I'm doing here. And I can make my curves a little less prominent if I want to. And that's the nice thing about using the watercolor is that you can keep changing it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cover the whole thing. So you can see I've got, I'm using the wide part of my brush. I'm gonna rinse off and move to my second color here. I'm gonna continue using the wide part of my brush until I have everything covered. And now you can see I'm moving to a sideways brush of my uh, paintbrush here. So I get a thin line. So I'm creating all of these thin lines and then I'm gonna move to my third color, which is the darkest. I'm just gonna keep making these same brush marks. I'm gonna change direction just a tiny little bit so I get some variation. And I'm also not gonna reload my brush very often because I want it to sort of wear out the paint and make uh, some lighter strokes. So I'm just gonna keep going until I have it all filled the way I want. And uh, then I'm gonna move on to the gold. Now my paper is still damp. It's not pooling with water or anything. But by adding the gold on top while it's still wet, it'll kind of push the blue out of the way because I'm making a really thick layer of this gold. So I'm just gonna cover the bottom and uh, it will kind of be hard to cover at first, but as the paint gets thicker, I can do more of a tapping motion and get it really thick at the bottom. And the thicker you get it, the more it will stand out. And so now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna move on to creating my animals. I'm gonna stamp them in the Misty onto some Nina paper with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm gonna color them with Copic markers. Of the greens that I'm using for my turtle, I have a, a very, very light one. It's almost a yellow, this YG21. So my first two are kind of similar. Uh, the YG25 is a little lighter than the 17. But as I move in here and finish with the YG21, you can really see the yellow coming through and it really makes it, makes it look like there's a shadow. I'm gonna do something similar for his shell. I'm gonna use two pretty dark brown colors, the 25 and the 29. You can see I'm starting from the outside and moving in, but I'm making it a little bit darker on the bottom than on the top. And then when I move in with this E13, you can see that it is a much lighter color, so I'm doing a lot of blending there, but it really makes it look like it's got some dimension to it. For the crab, this is kind of the easiest one. I'm just gonna start at the bottom and move upwards. So I'm starting with this R27, and I'm just moving up until I finally get to the very tips of the eyes, and I'm gonna use R22 up there. I'm actually going to go back to my turtle and add some details, but I want it to dry first. And I'm gonna do that same thing with my fish. It's gonna be a two-step process. My fish is going to be my three favorite yellow colors, 17, 15, and 11. And I'm flicking upward because I want the Y11 to be in the middle of the fish. So I'm gonna start at the edges with the darkest, move in with the medium here, kind of flicking upward, and then finally I'm gonna finish with the Y11 in the center. And that makes it look like he actually has a shapely body. Now I'm gonna color those thin stripes later. Now going back to my turtle, I'm gonna use the darkest color I used earlier, the YG17, and I'm adding some dots here. And this is just to add some interest, some texture, and you wanna wait till it dries first because if you do it while it's still wet, then these dots will spread. The Copic markers have a really, really fine tip, so you can make really tiny dots. After I'm done with the YG17, I'm going a little bit darker with the G07, and I'm just hitting those very darkest areas um, with this darker color. I'm also adding some detail to his shell. I wanted to, it to look a little more textured. So I took my zero colorless blender and you can see this is the actual speed. Now I'm speeding it up, but I'm just drawing some lines. Now it's not exactly perfect. It doesn't look like a real turtle shell, but it definitely looks more interesting than it is just plain. So I'm just gonna keep going over these areas until they get kind of the lightness that I want. And uh, what this is doing is pushing the color away. So it just kind of removes it in the middle. 
Now I'm gonna go back to that second step of my fish with two different colors of purple. And I waited until my yellow dried because that way I would reduce any sort of bleeding that might occur if these two colors hit each other. All right, I do not have the dies for these, so I'm gonna cut them by hand. Now after I cut all these pieces, you'll notice that there was some two white areas here on the crab that were difficult to cut. So rather than cut them out, I went and got a Copic marker that matched my background. So I'm just gonna color that, so there's a little trick here. Um, so when I put it on top of the background, you won't even notice that I didn't cut it out. I want my sentiment to be in the same shape as my wave, so it looks like it's kind of running across it. So I just lay it flat on my block and then just a little trial and error here. So I'm gonna move it, check it, move it, check it. I only had to do it a couple of times till I got the shape I needed. And now I'll ink that up with some VersaFine black onyx ink. Now, because I spent a lot of time on the water, I want to make sure that I don't mess anything up with this sentiment. So I'm gonna use my stamp majig while I'm stamping it for the first time, I'll put the stamp on my jig in place so that if I have to ink it up again, which I did because I didn't press firmly on it, it'll go back to that same exact placement. So I'm gonna press it down one more time here and uh, I actually didn't get full coverage again, so I uh, pushed it down one more time and that was good enough. So here you go, this is what it looks like. Now I'm gonna put some tape runner on the back of this panel and adhere it to an A2 size Nina Solar White card base. And then finally, I'm gonna add some Stampin' Up Dimensionals to the back of my sea animals. I love these because you can cut them up to tiny little pieces. You can see I added some to the claws of my crab here. I'm just gonna place them all down in this bottom area, sort of in a triangle shape. And that is the card for today. So um, kind of a cute, fun card. And if you don't have any stencils or stamps for water, you can easily create your own. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.